In 2002, I invested $500 in my jewelry business, going door to door with my jewelry samples. In 2017, my company was valued at over $1 billion. This is how I did it. Hi, I'm Kendra Scott. I'm founder, executive chairwoman, and chief creative officer at Kendra Scott LLC. I started Kendra Scott Jewelry because I couldn't find the jewelry that I wanted and that I loved. I was looking for semi-precious stones and beautiful, unique shapes and cuts that I could afford. And quite honestly, there was just nothing out there that worked for me. And I thought if I could make product that was like this, perhaps there's other women out there that want it too. I grew up in a small town in Wisconsin and there wasn't a lot of fashion going on in this town, but my aunt was a fashion director for a department store in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And going and seeing her in her beautiful apartment in Milwaukee and going through her closet where she would have all these gorgeous clothes and accessories, it was like magic to me. And so sometimes people would say, you know, you didn't go to design school. Uh, you can't be a designer if you don't go to design school. And I, I completely disagree with that. I think we all know intrinsically the things that we are good at, the things that we're passionate about, the things that excite us, that we jump up out of bed in the morning wanting to do. My very first investment in my business was taking $500 out of my own money to buy supplies and create my very first little collection. And for us, that was a lot. Our mortgage was $1,500. I had my first business, the hat box, for five years. And I realized I couldn't just sell hats to be able to make payroll and all the things and the demands of running a retail store. So I started making jewelry and putting it in the case line right in the front where the register was. My jewelry would sell the day I'd put it in in the case. And after I closed the hat box, it was crazy to me because my customers were still calling. And guess what? They weren't calling for hats. They were calling for my jewelry. I started in 2002. My first son was born 11-11-2001. I took him in a little baby carrier and we went store to store with my samples in a tea box. You know, it was so scary to go out and do that, but I wanted to be present with him. I wanted to be the best mom I could be, but I desperately wanted to get back into business again. And it started very small out of the extra bedroom in my house. I would make jewelry while Cade was napping. I'd be wire wrapping and fulfilling orders or calling people on the phone, seeing if they needed a reorder, doing sales, all of the things. It was this new phase of my life as a mother. I had a second child when Cade was about two and a half years old, Beck, and I was in the very early stages of building my business. And I can tell you at that time, I was terrified that I wouldn't be able to support them, that I was gonna have to give up this dream of my business. But it was this village that we created within our workplace of these strong women and you know mothers. And we were all there together, supporting one another, loving one another. But I'll never forget that first day, I actually sold all my samples to the last store I visited. And she gave me a check for $1,200. And as we were getting more orders and more success, and the stores were selling out of the product, the boutiques here in Austin, I realized I couldn't just keep taking the, the profits and trying to buy materials. I needed to have more money than that. Uh, so I went to a bank and I asked for a line of credit. And based on my, some of my orders, and also thank goodness for my father-in-law giving me a good word, uh, I was able to get a small line of credit that I eventually built up. But a line of credit is debt. And debt, you know you have to pay off. And I had someone I loved, my father-in-law, say, I believe in her, and I wasn't going to let him down. So that drove me even more. As the business grew, the money that I would make, I was investing right back into the business and hope that eventually I can put more money into our family piggy bank. The line of credit helped me do a lot of things. One, it helped me get more materials to produce the orders I was receiving. It also helped me be able to have more marketing materials where I could go out and actually attract new customers. They say fake it till you make it, um, but in those days it was what I could do with what I had. When you don't have a lot of money to work with and you don't have just this influx of like endless cash, you really have to think about every dollar and it has 
to matter. You can't make a mistake, and that's the scariest part about it. I still think about that every single day and every decision I make. So a line of credit is a wonderful thing because you utilize the cash to buy materials and then create your orders, and once those materials and you sell those orders and you receive payment in, you should be paying down your line of credit. And so as my business continued to grow, my line of credit actually continued to grow. So now my borrowing capability grew with my business, but that helped us grow the business because I couldn't get investment capital. And I realized I was focusing so much on trying to get investment, I wasn't paying as much attention day to day to the business. And one of my greatest advisors said to me, Kendra, focus on your business. Focus on building the best business you can build and the investment capital will come. And I'll never forget the day that the phone rang in Austin, Texas, and my assistant said to me, Kendra, there's somebody on the phone with Oscar De La Renta's office. And I really thought it was a joke. And I picked up the phone and, and it wasn't a joke. And an intern that was from Texas was wearing my jewelry, working for him in New York City. And he saw her jewelry and he asked her, what is that? And she said, it's a Texas designer. I bought it at Nordstrom. And he was like, I love what she's doing. That is what I want for our spring 2005 show. He told me that he had many other designers working on product, that I had 72 hours to come up with the pieces, and that he didn't know if even one piece would make the runway, but that he had faith that I could do it. And I remember dropping the phone and just bawling, like guttural crying. And if Oscar de la Renta could believe in me, well, gosh, I had to believe in myself. The next big financial investment for this company would hands down have to be opening my very first Kendra Scott retail store. We really saw unbelievable growth was during one of the scariest financial crises in the United States, the 2008 recession that we've lived through at least. We were just about 1.5 to $2 million in revenue, uh, selling primarily to specialty accounts and some department stores across the United States. We were a team of about 10 people. Uh, total in our company, so very lean uh, team. When the recession hit, we saw about $500,000 come immediately off of our revenue in one year, and we knew that we had to do something different. I was going to lose my business. I had a line of credit that I had to pay off. I, I had responsibility. I had to go to our team at that point and say, we're in a tough spot. And some of you, I need you guys to work with me. You know, I was taking a minimal salary, just enough to basically keep my lights on. But I thought, you know, we're gonna try something different. And if you guys are in, it could be amazing, but it could totally fail also. And everyone on my team was like, yes, let's go retail. Let's get direct to consumer. Let's focus on her and let's see what happens. And we literally rolled our sleeves up and we did something that was very scary at the time, but turned out to be absolutely what the company needed. We then launched our e-commerce website. We launched Color Bar, which was a customization tool that we used online where customers could custom design their pieces. We wanted the customer to be engaged and involved in the design process. We were being disruptive. We were doing things that nobody was doing at that time. We were opening a store when everyone around us in that center were closing their stores. And people looked at me and thought, you're crazy. But sometimes crazy is exactly what you have to be in business. In 2010, our revenue went from that 1 million to about 3.5 million. 2011, it went over 6 million. 2012, we were at over 20 million. And so it just was absolutely lightning in a bottle growth once we opened that first store. My third investment into the company was when I brought in Berkshire Partners in 2017. Three years after that first investor, our company was valued at over $1 billion. Things changed dramatically. We had knowledgeable partners with incredible retail experience with us at the table, helping us really strategically think about the next 10 years of Kendra Scott. Personally, I was able to do things in my life that I never thought would be possible. I didn't have to worry anymore about paying my rent. I could actually now start thinking big, dreaming big. What did the next part of my life look like as well? Included starting a school for other women, that women could learn 
learn the entrepreneurial mindset no matter what their background, that they didn't have to be in the school of business to learn it, and so founded the Kendra Scott Women's Entrepreneurial and Leadership Institute at the University of Texas. Things like that were things that never in a million years could I have thought possible. If you're not in the school of business, you don't get taught those things. So if you're in the school of fine art, and you're an artist or a jewelry designer or in fashion, you're not taught that entrepreneurial mindset. And that to me was just plain wrong. I wanted the school to be open to all majors. Anyone, anywhere could come to our school and now can get a minor in the Women's Entrepreneurial and Leadership Institute. They can learn that mindset. It may not mean that they open their own business, it very well could someday, but it also gives them that ability to say, this is what I want, and now I'm gonna know how to build the roadmap to get me there. And that was a huge moment and so exciting to see the school continue to grow and develop. And hopefully this isn't the only school we'll be at. I'm hoping to grow this program to other universities across the country. I think the most exciting thing that happened uh, with my third big investment was the ability to be able to really help other women with their own dreams. We were all sitting around the table together as a team and we started talking about what are our core values. And it was these simple things that we just talked about and it was three words. It was family, it was fashion, and it was philanthropy. Those were the core of Kendra Scott and every decision we made, we made around those three core pillars. And it's important to have those core pillars because that's how you hire, that's how you pick the people you work with, is they need to share those core values. And many times it is the founder's core values and they will find birds of a feather that flock together. And when you've established that, it can very much become the company's core values. It's really important to know your strengths, but also more importantly, to know your weaknesses. And I think I'm really proud of myself as a businesswoman, as a mother, a mompreneur, uh, that I've been able to do all of those things, but also be able to have the humility to say, I'm not perfect, and sometimes I can't do this alone. It takes a team, it takes a village. There is a point when you have to say, I believe in this, I am in, I'm 100% committed to seeing the success of this company happen. If you're passionate, if you're driven, if this is what makes you happy, then go for it all the way and don't let anyone tell you that you have to do it a certain way because I'm living proof that you don't. Thank you so much, Glamour, for having me. I had so much fun and I hope that you got some great tips, inspiration from this story today.